ladies and gentlemen, welcome to IT Skills channel. My name is Aiden. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to deploy or rather install VMware hypervisor. This is the latest VMware. It's EX, EXI8 or vSphere 8, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you how to get this result. So you can see here I did this on the Intel Nuke and I'm about to start over and show you how to do this, all the process of it. So let's get started. So we're going to go full screen. So over here, what you can see right now, this is my Intel Nuke. I have to go to the, this is the advanced BIOS, basically. This shows you all your specs, your processor and everything else. So now I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in my thumb drive and I'm going to boot from the thumb drive and I don't have to do anything. I just plug it in. It should know what to do by default. So it's one of the you know, nice things about having an Intel Nuke is just super easy to do this. So now I'm going to boot from the thumb drive by simply hitting F10 to save my changes. If I made any changes, I'm just going to go ahead and reboot. So it's rebooting right now. You can see it's booting up to the, the, I, uh, the operating system over here. Once you get here, you are going to go ahead and get an error. And I'll show you how to fix that error real quick. This is the normal error you're going to get. It's called the purple screen of death. It just means our CPU is not compatible with this. And so we're not going to load up properly here. We're going to get this. This screen is always annoying for people to get. I, I was annoyed when I got it too. But after a couple of research, all we need to do is turn off this fatal CPU error. That's what we need to do. So to do that, I'm simply going to go ahead and reboot it again. And then I'm going to have to hit one as soon as it comes back on. I'm going to have to press the shift Z O, not shift zero. And then that way it will stop loading. I don't know if I missed it or not, but we'll see. There's one way to find out. I think I may have missed it. Yeah, I missed it. Yeah, you're going to have to, I'm going to have to do it again because if you miss it, you're just going to have to do it again until you get to that. So, yeah, I missed it. Let me do this again. So you have to type it right away. So let's see. I'm just going to keep typing Shift O. Shift O. Shift O. There you go. I got to it now. So you're going to have to type in CD RAM put uniformity. So you're going to have to type CPU, CD RAM boot, CPU uniformity, hard check, you know, panic equals false. So it doesn't actually check the CPU and pen it, like basically force the error. So once we do this, we hit OK, it's going to actually not going to go to the print the purple skin of death anymore. So it's going to get us to give us the option where we can install the, the, new, like, uh, the VMware EXSI 8. For this one, though, one thing you're going to have to do is you have to run that command every time it boots up. And it is can be annoying. And I have a permanent way of disabling that. And we'll do that once we get it installed. So right now it's checking our memory. You can see we are running 30 gigabyte of memory, you know, 32 gigabyte of memory rather. This is normal. Whenever you see this, just wait patiently. You could spend about two to three minutes on the screen. So depending on your, how fast your Intel Nuke is. All right, so here is the final screen. It will tell us that, hey, welcome to VMware EXI 802, 8002, or 8.0.2 installation. VMware EXI 8.0.2 installs on most systems, but only system on VMware compatibilities guided list are supported. And this Intel Nuke is definitely not. So that's why we're going to have to go ahead and actually, you know, do that walk around we just did for the CPU for, for you know, uniformity hard hard check panic equals false so we have to do that command now that we already we're gonna hit enter to install we're gonna have to hit f11 to accept the eula agreement and this is scanning all our disk drives so this is fine because what it's doing is it's making sure that we have an appropriate disk available so we're gonna install this on a, our 500 gigabyte of storage or ssd rather and I'm going to reserve the NVMe for, you know, basically if my VMs be to run on the ISO and the other VM data. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit enter unless I want to change it. So I'm going to hit enter here. 
It says here you selected the disk that contains at least one partition. If you continue, the selected disk will be overwritten. I'm okay with that. Let's do it. And I'm going to click on this is the language. So you need to just choose your key by lay, keyboard layout by choosing US default. And here is the root password. So this password is important. So remember it. Make this something memorable because you'll need it later on to log into the web interface. So my password matched. I know what it is. We're going to hit enter to continue. Now it's going to say final warning. Your disk will be repartitioned. If you have any real data on this one, evict, you know, eject now or hit back out of it. We're, we're sure we want to do this, so we're going to hit F11. There you go. It's actually now installing EXI, ESSI, ESXI. Now, this installation is not going to take that long because, you know, it's going to probably take like five to three minutes, really. As you can see how fast it's going. So that's one of the beauty of VMware, the latest EXSI. And that's why it's great to have that. So, so from no, from nothing at all, we almost went from having our nuke being basically doing nothing to having a, we basically installed ESXi 8.0.2. And you can see it says successful. And now we're going to need to eject our bootable USB flash drive. And then from that point on, we're going to need to go ahead and actually let the boot happen. So I'm going to show you what happens now when I actually eject it. So I just ejected it. So I'm just going to go ahead and actually enter to reboot it. So what it's doing is now shutting down. It just shut down and it's going to reboot. So once it reboots back up, you're going to get this again. If you want to interrupt the boot, it will tell you to do something. I didn't do it. We're going to go get the purple screen of death again. This is normal because we still have the CPU incompatibility or uniformity issue. So now we see what we got again. Same thing. So now what I need to do is actually there's a couple commands I can run. I can run the same command again to basically, you know, get rid of this or... I can change this on the BIOS and I'm gonna change it on the BIOS because if I run this on the on the official command, like the command again, if for whatever reason it doesn't save it. So I need to change this on the BIOS, the power settings and the hyperthread options. So that way it will actually work for us correctly. So I'm gonna shut this down again. I'm gonna get to the BIOS by hitting F2 because every time it reboots, it's gonna get to that, you know purple screen of death and I don't want that so I'm going to want to not get this ever again and so what I need to do on the BIOS is going to be go to power power performance and cooling settings now this is one thing I recommend do this at your own discretion I'm doing this because I don't have any problem with doing this I love doing this it's, I, it's a hobby for me so what I need to do is now is change the external cooling so that way it actually is changed to where it's user defined rather than the way it's set up right now. That's why it's not coming up. We're getting that issue. So we need to change this to where it's actually user defined. And now I'm not sure what it will do to the Intel Nuke performance, but I haven't seen anything different. This is my second Nuke doing this on. And I'm going to just change this to user defined. When I do this, I'm going to scroll down and then I'm going to click on performance. That's the next area we have to do. So we change it on the external ambient temperature tolerance, user defined. And then on the performance, I need to change the processor. And then on the processor, I need to make sure that active cores is set to zero. This is one of the ways to get around it. Or you can type that command. So if I hit save now, we're no longer going to get the purple, purple skin of death. But again, if you don't want to do this changes, I recommend don't do it. But I'm doing it because I don't want to type a command every time my device reboots. Sometimes I reboot my device or I, I unplug them accidentally and I don't want it to type the command. That's why I'm doing it. But again, what I did is change the external ambient temperature tolerance. And I went to performance again and I just changed the processor you know, efficient cores to zero. So that's what I did. 
Now by doing this, I'm gonna hit X out of this and I'm gonna hit okay. Now we should get our our Intel Nuke boot up again and this time we should not get the purple screen of death. Again, if you don't want if you don't want to do that, you could hit the shift to zero and then type the command we did earlier on. But now it's gonna go ahead and boot it up because we changed the the settings it needed to boot up correctly. So now we should get an IP address screen and uh, already looking much better. By now we had gotten the purple screen of death. Right now we're not getting that. And that's pretty much it, folks. That's how we can go from having not VMware installed into our Nuke into having VMware installed. It took literally under 20 minutes. And that's ultimately, that's me with always like talking about explaining it further. But that's it. So you can see my... You know, I got a DHCP address. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, now configure it. So change couple configuration to finalize installation. So I'm going to hit F2. That's going to get me the configuration. The default password is nothing. So root is the username. Password is nothing. So hit enter and enter. That's going to get you. Oops. Actually, I did set up a password. Sorry. I set up the password already when I was installing it. So let me go ahead and put in my root password. Usually, if you're running on a USB stick, then... Yeah, usually when you're running on a USB stick, you don't have to do this. It will just have the password blank, but I set up mine already. So now, what I need to do is manage. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and actually configure the network, configure management network. And then here, I'm going to go ahead you know, configure the IPv4. I'm just simply going to make, click here. I'm going to change the IP. So I'm going to get the IP to where it's actually closer to the other hypervisor. I have another hypervisor already, and it was set to, you know, 1218. So I'm going to make this 219. I don't like having hypervisors have difference in IPs. I like to have them close in IP. So that way I can, you know, troubleshoot them so i'm just gonna make one this one 219 and then everything else is fine so we don't have to do anything else the subnet gateways everything is good now the only thing i could do to save myself a little headache or away from little headache is i could technically ping that ip but i'm pretty sure it's available i mean I don't use 200 machines, so I'm pretty sure it's available. But if you want to be safe, or maybe you have an environment that's congested with a lot of devices, you do want to ping the IP before you assign it. Otherwise, you're going to have IP conflict, which is going to be headache to troubleshoot. So I'm going to hit enter. This is something, again, I'm not worried, but if you're worried, you should always double check. And here in the DNS, I'm going to specify a DNS. My DNS is equally as just my gateway. I'm going to also specify an open DNS which is going to be 208.67.220.220. That that 220. So those are the old DNS I specify, and I'm also going to change the host name to something else. So the first host name we had was I teach skills N2. So that's the first one we had is N1. This one's going to be N2. And if I can go ahead and actually just escape out of it, uh, I'll show you in a second whenever I'm done with this. I'm going to hit enter. So now I did everything. So I changed the host name to that. And so now nothing on that. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to hit escape. And then I'm going to hit save, you know, hit yes to confirm my changes. And now it's changed. The changes are confirmed. And already you can see here my IP's change is set to static. And this is what you want to do, really. And now if you want to go back to F2 again and then put in my root password, I can change anything else if I wanted to, but I'm not going to change anything else. It's now for us time to switch to the browser screen and finalize this and call it a day. So now on the browser screen, let's go back to the home. So this is my old EXI, EXXI and I'm going to open a new one. So let's just go to 192.168.1.0. So just hit enter on the browser screen. I'm going to hit advanced, hit continue. I didn't install certificate, so that's why it's prompting me for that. It's fine. Hit root, type root in the password, and then the password you specify during the install of the ESXi. 
now we're gonna see get the option to join the you know G- VMware community improvement or community customer experience improvement program. I'm not gonna join this. Hit OK. So that's what we got now. So this is our basically the what result we were looking for. We have a the VM no VM right now. We have storage, you know, currently available. One is the data storage, and then we have networking setup. And then we, if we go to the host details, you know, you can see here our memory, 6% is utilized now. CPU is only 1% utilized because we're not doing anything else. Now, what I need to do is go to the storage. I'm going to make a new, I'm going to rename this one too, you know, main storage. So that's what I'm going to do. So, but ultimately, one one thing about VMware that's good is that whenever you have done anything it will just have it side by side like this so uh it's really nice so but yeah that's simply it i don't want to make this video forever the rest of it we're gonna do it on another video so if you want to watch it please stay tuned thank you for watching have a great rest of the day